Ladies and gentlemen, today is June 30th, 2015, and this is the Can Kale Show, episode 242, where we learn to be better artists. Today is Tutorial Tuesday. I am your host, Keenan Lafferty, and today we are going to be working on the lovely and precious Pool Party Lulu, aka Poo Party Lulu, but you guys don't want to see that. You don't want to see Poo Party. We're going to be painting Pool Party Lulu, and I'm going to be doing a time lapse, basically going to be running through a time lapse and writing notes about creating this piece, about flow, about my thought process, and all that good stuff. But before we get into that, we need to take a stroll down a very, very special place, and that is the lovely lane. <sighs> because you guys are so awesome and you've been submitting your artwork as I have told you to, as I have ordered you to. And for those of you who have not joined up, please uh, type in that tiny URL backed by the Facebook blue at the bottom of the screen. And you can go check out all this awesome art for yourself, like the page, submit it, and get featured on the show. Isn't that awesome? Go do it, people. Go do it, people. I know you want to. All right. And last but not least, oh, was there something else I need to talk about? I felt like there was something else to be talked about. Nope, all right, on with the tutorial. Let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so like I said, okay, so we're gonna be working with Pool Party Lulu, okay? And to get things started, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the time lapse. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to it. And because I'm freaking awesome, I'm going to pause it. And I did time lapse this, as I said, um, but I'm going to be pausing it at certain points, and this might be actually a really good one to start off with. And uh, yeah, let's talk about this. Okay, right there. I'm gonna go ahead and print screen that. And let's fast forward to the next one. Okay, cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do today. I'm, I got a very special thing planned out for you. Okay, so I'm basically gonna be taking screenshots of each of these things of each of these uh, time-lapse things, and I'm going to be drawing out notes for you. Hey, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? And why can I not see anybody in the chat? What the heck is going on? What's going on with the chat? Sorry, guys, hang on. I'm trying to, oh, there it goes, there it goes. I can see you now. Sorry, if you typed anything once the show started, I did not see it. But anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so the first thing that I'm doing and I've told you guys this many times before, is what I like to start out doing is I think about shapes and I'm drawing with flow. See how I'm like just like doing stuff like this? I, I imagine this piece like having a flow that kind of goes this way. And I always like to set up my pieces so that way they're kind of like good for desktops. So like normally on desktops, everybody has like their icons and stuff over here. And then, you know, like your start menu and everything. And then you have a really cool character right over here. Okay, so that's what I'm thinking about. I like to set up my um, my canvases 16 by 9. Okay, and that is the uh, ratio for most widescreen monitors. So hey, how about that? Makes a nice print, not only a nice print, but desktop for everybody else. Okay, so first step, shapes. Just kind of bringing things out, sketching in very lightly. Oh, another thing that I want to talk about is the face. Look at how simple this face is, yet how much uh, emotion it actually captures here. It literally is just like that. And yet, it's like this is the exact expression that I'm hoping to achieve in the drawing. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to the time lapse. Let's go ahead and get to another part where I can print screen it, and we'll talk about it. Okay, so as we go forward here, you're going to see me begin to refine the face, refine the face. And the way that I do that is basically... Um, like I've shown you guys before, actually I might as well just show you now. Let's go ahead and head back to this. So you might be wondering how I go from this, right? Or actually, let's go ahead and pull up the actual thing. Because I have the old sketch right back here. Okay, cool. Let me show you guys how I go about refining the face. And uh, I'm going to try to get to as much as possible. I might be overloading myself with by doing this, but whatever. It's all good. All right. Okay, good. I can see you guys in the chat now. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how I go about refining a face. Okay, so let's get to it. So you've seen that I've laid down these things, like these basic uh, kind of guidelines. And now what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start sculpting, okay? I use the other end, right? I'm always flipping my stylus back and forth like this. And what I do is I begin sculpting out the face. I know that I kind of want it to have, I can kind of see the, the geometry within. You know, you kind of want to think about x-ray vision 
right? Think about your x-ray vision kind of going through here. And I'll actually paint with like a slightly darker color so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm thinking x-ray vision. Okay, so check this out. Thinking x-ray vision going through here. There's our midpoint. There's our middle point. Or rather, midpoint, middle point, more like that. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking about. Thinking about these things. And now I'm going to begin um, laying in basically the foundations for the face. Okay, so I know that I want the nose to be kind of right here. I really like this expression on the mouth. So I'm going to try to keep that as much as possible. Try to preserve that. Preserve that. Sometimes I'll do this thing where um, I'll draw a face like this, right? And it's like, oh, hey, I like that expression. But now how do I translate that into being like actual eyes? You know what I mean? And this is actually a problem that we're going to run into right here. But I'm going to show you how we're going to go about fixing that. So the mouth actually translates pretty dang well because it was already positioned well. Okay, so you're going to have something like that. Go ahead and sculpt that into our proper shape. There you go. But now we're going to go to the eyes because the eyes obviously don't look like little, they're not just dots, right? They need to have eyelids. They need to have eyelashes. So what I'm going to do is normally what I like to do is I'll kind of set um, eyelids around it. So I think about this shape. I think about like this, and then it goes up. It's a very, it's the anime eye, basically. Everybody's seen the anime eye. Basically, it looks like that. But I'm thinking about it in perspective and in a 3D space. So here's what you want to do. Okay, so you draw that in, draw that eye like that, go up, you want to think about where it connects there, and you're going to go back like that, and then see how that eye fits in there really nicely. Really nice, really nice. But then this other eye we're going to have some problems with, because if we try to draw that in, see how now it looks a little bit, I mean it looks okay, but it needs to be more distorted, right, because the face is rounding itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this um, eyelash in here and then I'm going to bring this up and then what you're going to see me do is see how the top of this eyelash the top of this eyelash rounds like that right and then you might be tempted to say okay well since a face is symmetrical the other eye should round like this and go like that way but rather what I want you guys to do is think about mirroring the, or not mirroring this um, replicating it so the eye curves that way for this eye and then this eye is also going to curve that way. And the reason why this happens is because we're awesome and we know about perspective. And that's what happens to the eye, especially with like an anime eye. And the reason why this is happening is because you want to think about the curvature of the eyeball that's actually in there, right? The curve of the eye. And that's what's causing you to see like the edge of it like that. Okay? And you can kind of draw it up like that. Draw on that eye. And you can begin to see a refined face starting to sh take shape. Shake tape. <laughs> a refined face starting to shake tape. All right. So that's how I go about refining my sketches, basically. And let's go ahead and get back to the time lapse. There we go. So you can see that's what I'm doing there. And now I'm just going to continue through the drawing as we go. Um, I'll show you a couple things. You'll notice that I kind of, I'll distort things, I'll warp things as I go. And that is something that I used to kind of really try to shy away from. I, would, I used to be one of those artists that was like, no, you know what? It should be perfect the very first time that I draw it. I shouldn't have to use the liquify tool or the warp tool. But then I realized, then one day the awful truth dawned on me. It's like my boss doesn't care whether I use the liquify tool. He doesn't care whether I use the warp tool. All he cares is that it's done and it looks good. So use the tools that are given to you at your disposal. And that, that is basically what a true professional does. He takes the tools that are at his, at his disposal and he uses them to the best degree possible. Makes freaking awesome art. And that's what I expect you to do too. All right. So continuing, uh, same thing is basically happening through here. Um, let me go ahead and show you guys. Let me pause it again. Let me show you a little bit of what I'm doing in like the torso area with like the swimsuit. Let's go ahead and get back to this. So let me show you what I like to go about doing here. Okay, again, we've got all these scribbles and, and junk in here, right? But we want to start refining that. We want to start refining that. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going in here, and this time I will use the same color. I will, I will use the same color on this one. 
I think I'll title this Refining a Sketch, How to Refine a Sketch. But this is all that I'm doing here. I'm just using both sides of my stylus. You have two sides, why not use it? The light side, which is basically your eraser, okay? To put light back into your piece. And then the dark side, the dark side to add it back in, add darkness back in. And now I'm beginning to sculpt my character into place into the way that I want it to be, okay? So that's basically all I'm doing. I'm kind of refining this edge, be like, okay, I want the swimsuit to look like this, I want it to look like that, like our torso is like that. Now you can see that negative space forming. Uh -huh. And then I go back in and I'll clean up those lines. Cleaning up some lines. I know I want these little floaties to be there. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. My secret revealed. My secret revealed for the 20th time. But actually, you know, speaking of uh, secrets revealed, I was actually thinking about now, going forward, what I'd like my show to be about is doing more stuff that's kind of like this, doing more stuff that's a little bit more uh, where I will have a time lapse and then I will sort of screenshot it and then kind of explain a couple of things that I'm thinking about, explaining my thought process, my processes. Oh, another thing that I really like to do when I'm sketching is it's not just line or no line. I also really like to press lightly with my brush, my chalk brush, to create, uh, you could say like shadows, you know, like little shadows or like blush on the cheeks. You know, it'll go back in and just kind of like erase things out like that. Cleaning up lines, but also adding them back in. And then let me show you a really cool trick that I do with the hair. So say I want some hair to be like this. Here's the top of the hat thing. Let's go ahead and erase that out. And then say we got some hair here, some hair there, hair everywhere. Show you a cool little trick with hair. Because we're awesome and we know how to properly use the force of the, the oh, what is it? Pressure sensitivity, AKA the force of the Intuos pen. We can go through the hair like this and we can basically create um, highlights. Highlights in the hair. You see what I'm doing there? Basically, so that's a really rudimentary um, example of it, but basically, look, so you can see it here. See, see how I'm refining those lines and then I leave that opening right there for a highlight to go through. So, and that gives us our nice, our good old hair highlight, okay? So that's my trick for you. All right, so moving on. Moving on with this good old time lapse. Let's go. All right. So now that I've done that, I am now also, I like to lasso the eyes. I'll kind of play around with some of the facial features, make sure that it's balanced and cute looking, yet not completely alien looking. Because sometimes with the Yorls, they got like these giant heads. Sometimes it, you can make their faces look a little freaky. If you don't do it right, they can look a little freaky. So, um, oh, and the reason why I'm mirroring the canvas is again to sort of check, checking flow, um, checking the the face as well, because you guys know this, every time you mirror your image, you can see things. You see it with fresh eyes once again, fresh eyes, all anew, and you can uh, pick out mistakes that you may not have seen before. All righty, ladies and gentlemen. So for the next couple minutes, it's probably just gonna be me refining, refining my lines. You guys have seen this technique many a time, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and open up the good old question catapults. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please cast your questions over the castle walls, as has been explained in this video, <laughs> perfectly explained in this video. And we'll go ahead and continue with this time lapse. Uh, someone was asking how I go about flipping the canvas. I will show you. Let's go ahead and go back to this. Okay, so the way that I like to do it is you just, I have a hotkey set up, it's just set to F2, but to do it manually, you're gonna go to image, image rotation, and then flip canvas horizontal. Boom, there you go. And then you can look at your picture and you can notice that her face 
looks freaky in its current state and you should probably fix that but that's the important part all right so getting back to this all right so um in the meantime let's go ahead and let this time lapse roll rolling with it i'm gonna take a couple questions all righty all righty questions any questions coming in any questions coming in um, one thing that I do need to show you guys also is how to warp stuff. I need to show you guys how to warp stuff. And then we'll talk about that right there, what I'm doing with the inner tube. In fact, let me go ahead and print screen that. Let me talk about warping. Warping is another very important thing. A very awesome thing that you can do at home. You can do it yourself at home. And the only thing that you're going to need is a lasso. You're going to need your lasso tool, which is right here. Let's say, okay, uh, Lulu, this is great and all, but like your head is way too big, which is actually something that I ran into later. I was like, Lulu, your head is way too big. So we can go ahead and select that area. And I highly encourage you guys to do this with your drawings while it's in this state because it's very, it's still very rough. It's very malleable. You can basically bend it into whatever you wish. So we can go ahead and take her head and we can go ahead and shrink it and stick it back on her body, right? But then let's say, uh, just for kicks, that we wanted to take this staff here and we wanted to bend it, right? So the same thing, we're going to, oh, sorry, and then hit Control T. Control T, after you lasso your selection, brings up this handy thing that allows you to grab it, move it around, stretch it, and all that good stuff, okay? But if you right click it, you're going to see something called warp. You click that and then, whoa, this awesome grid just comes up and then you can bend your drawings into whatever you want it to be. I like to think of this as sort of like a more controlled liquify. You can do liquify and like bend like tiny little areas at a time. This is more of like a smooth liquify. So you can, um, you can just bend things to whatever you want. Sometimes you use it for distortion of certain things in perspective, but uh, yes, that's the way you do it. Once again, control T, right click it, and then select warp and you will have a good time. All righty, people, those questions coming in. Um, ooh, Leo's Eyes is asking, and in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and keep this time lapse rolling, rolling, and then we'll come back to that inner tube. Um, what are the fundamentals you need to think of before you get a good grasp and then consider things such as style, developing style? Um, to be honest, I really think that a lot of people get caught up in like, what should my style be? You like look at this and they're like, whoa, Keenan, this is such a great style. How did you come up with that? And really, it's not so much that I sat down one day and I said, all right, time to make something completely unique that no one has ever seen before. That's going to be my style. But rather, what I went through, it was just a natural it was, just like, it was a natural process because basically what I did was I straight up copied pieces uh, from artists that I liked. And I studied a lot of anime. I studied a lot of comics. I studied a lot of, well, basically it was like anime and comics. And then I fused those two together by drawing them, literally copying them, and then kind of taking a little bit of the thing that I learned from something that I copied. Say, hey, um, even something as simple as um, the way that this artist drew the folds in the shoulder of the like the jacket right the folds on the shoulder of the jacket or the clothing or the way that the artist drew this hair right i'm going to take that technique i'm going to put it into my own character and put it into my own style and basically your style will be an amalgamation of all of the artists that you copy basically because like the old thoughtful thursday i said great artist copy or no good artist copy great artist steal right i think picasso said that picasso said that yes so yeah, don't don't be so afraid of like thinking that you need to be unique and you need to come up with something completely different. Just do the things that you naturally like, even if you're straight up copying somebody. And then basically, if you were to copy two artists and then say, hey, I like the way this artist does this and that, like say the faces, and then the way that this artist does the hair and maybe the clothes or like the backgrounds, put those two together, boom, you have your own style. And there you go. That's the way you do it. But yeah, fundamentals and all that stuff, you'll develop naturally. Develop all that stuff naturally. Let's see, am I missing anything else here? No, we're just refining the staff. All right. Uh, Hamy is asking, how, how much time does it take to do a sketch like Pool Party Lulu? I still think I'm taking so much time for it. Okay. Um, this probably, I did this sketch. It takes time. This technique specifically takes quite a bit of time. I think I was working on this for probably at least like 12 hours. 
at least 12 hours. Because there's a lot of, I like to really take my time with stuff. I like to refine my lines. You guys see the way that I do it. I start from like this giant like mess of like spaghetti and then I slowly start like chipping away, right? I basically get a block of marble and I start chipping away at the drawing within. But it is very important that you guys consider, remember, I cannot stress this enough. The reason why this, okay, the reason why the drawing looks good is because of this right here because I sat down and I drew out just this very, very simple sketch. I got all my flow lines in, and then I'm able to build off of that. That's what we call setting a good foundation, right? A good foundation. So you can see how all of these curves, like they're all kind of running together. See like the hair, everything just feels very organic. And I was like, I'm gonna have like some water here and everything is just flowing and it's very fun. It's a very fun piece. But too often I see people get in there like, okay, I'm gonna draw Lulu. All right, let's make a new layer, new canvas. Can Kale showed me how to do it. 16 by nine, 300 DPI. All right, here we go. All right, all right, all right. So like, here's a nose. Oh no, that doesn't look like Lulu's nose. Okay, let's I'll start over again. Oh, okay, I'm, I got this, I got this, okay. There's a nose, okay, okay, good. All right, now let's draw an eye. Okay, I think he said like, do it like this. And it's like that. Oh, that looks awesome. Wow, that's great. But then you see how you're like building off of this and then it's like, you have to like consider flow as you're drawing. Don't do that. Don't do that, I will find you. Okay, you wanna do this. You wanna get messy, you wanna have fun. Think of it as flinging the paint on the canvas at first and then kind of pulling the painting out of it, okay? Now the re like I said, okay, reason why this looks this way, right? Sure, it's like, Pix is cute. The, the freaking blowfish Pix is cute. There's all this flow happening in it. And the reason why it is, is because of this, okay? All right. <laughs> Next question coming in. I, I love this. <laughs> this is a good daily already. Um, all right, I'm gonna keep this thing rolling and then we'll talk about the inner tube, I swear. Uh, last question and then we are moving on to the inner tube. All right, uh, can I draw another fan splash? I don't know if I can take another like like two months to do another fan splash. I would like to. This one will be fairly rendered. I wanna focus specifically on the water effects because I know that's something that you guys are interested in. Uh, but as far as a fan splash, probably not. Probably not and I do apologize for that. Who the heck asked that? Uh, oh, I lost your name, sorry, shoot. Oh. Rainbow, Rainbow Fied Maya. Yes, sorry, Rainbow Fied. Um, let's see. Ooh, Atlas12 is asking, do you have trouble managing your time between playing video games and doing work? Any procrastination issues? Great question, Atlas. Yes. Um, yeah, there's always like that struggle of kind of procrastinating and just like not being very confident or doing something easy, right? Doing something easy. Get that little, you know, that little... Uh, like that release a chemical in your brain because you know you're happy, you won the game, you're good at the game, you're certain that you're good at the game. But with a drawing, it's like so unknown. It's like, well, am I good at this? Can I actually draw? I've never done it before. So really, I think what's happening in your mind is that you're opting for something that you're more, um, you're more certain about. You're more certain about the outcome as opposed to something that you're uncertain about. But I would say, you know, take that plunge, step into that uncertainty because you will find amazing works of art and you will find amazing uh, pieces. So it's very important, very, very important. You gotta get past that procrastination. I did, I struggle with it, I still struggle with it, but uh, something, it's a constant battle, and it's a fight worth uh, having. It's worth fighting for. All righty, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, that is gonna wrap things up, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Daily News asked a great question that I can bring into this inner tube thing. All right, so Daily News is asking, and this will be the last question. Sorry, I can't get to everybody's question. It's asking about confident lines, confident lines. And from what I have told you guys thus far is that, again, confident lines comes from doing sketches, doing tiny sketches. Oh, and the other thing you realize is in the very beginning of that time lapse, I wasn't drawing on the entire canvas. I was drawing them like this. They were tiny, tiny little sketches. And I was, this is basically me just playing with flow, playing with flow. Because you wanna know how to get more confident lines? Have more relaxed and fun doodles, right? That you can kind of pull from, okay? Say maybe it's like this. And, and it's like, 
you don't even have to necessarily worry about what you're drawing, but like say, okay, here's the character's face here, and then this isn't necessarily like Lulu, but maybe they have like, maybe it is a Yorl, but maybe they have ears like that, and then they have like a staff thing, and it's like coming at you like, wow, like that. And then, you know, just, just allow yourself to have fun with the lines, okay? I don't know what these things are. Maybe they're tentacles. Maybe it's just some, some weird thing, but anyway. So get more confidence in your lines by doing um, more relaxed sketches. Relax while you're sketching, okay? All right, but it is time to talk about the lines that were done on this inner tube and that we're ending today. I hope you guys had a good time. I know I did. I know I sure did. Okay, so lines on an inner tube. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and sculpt this out. We're gonna get rid of these lines in here so we have a clean inner tube to work with. Now basically what I'm creating here is something that I saw in a how to draw manga book. Wow, that actually worked for something. Those books are actually good for something. Yes, I did pull this out of one of those. And I think it was for drawing like petticoats on like maids and stuff. But basically the technique has to do with this. So you draw a line like this, right? And then there's like a line where this fabric will connect to. And then you basically draw lines connecting that fabric, okay? Same principle is gonna apply here, okay? Except it's gonna be actually drawn well. Okay, so what I want you guys to think about is your seam line, which is going to be right here. And we'll do it different color. Your seam line is occurring right here, right there. And then you're gonna have your line like this. Now, one thing that I wanna tell you guys about with the line, basically the, I don't know what you call it. Let's just call it like the fabric line, even though it's technically like plastic. But the fabric line, you're gonna draw it like this. Now, you might be tempted to make all the waves the exact same space and, and size, but rather what I want you to do is do some small ones, do some big ones, and then do a couple small ones. It makes it more organic that way, okay? So now what I want you to do is wherever this, uh, wherever this line overlaps that seam line, I want you to erase it. Oh wait, is that what I did? No, that's not what I did. <laughs> Don't erase that, but rather blend it blend it into the areas. Basically, here's what I'm thinking about. If there is a line, okay, hang on. This is like, we gotta zoom in way far for this. <laughs> if there's a line, normally the seam line goes like this, right? But see how this line right here, it goes past it? What I want you to do now is I want you to blend it into that, bring it to the line. So now you're gonna get something like that, okay? And then do it like that. See how I blended it up to that one? Blended it down to that one. Basically at the top, the uppermost points of your, and the, and the lowermost points of your folds, you wanna be drawing lines to them, okay? And then you're gonna get a really cool effect that looks like this. Oh, look at that! We have awesome little frilly things on the edge of our tube. And then with some refinement, with some refinement, you'll get it to look like that, see? But see, same principle going on there. See, big fold, big fold, smaller folds. Big fold, small fold. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're gonna call it a day. We're gonna call it a day. Let me go ahead and put these layers back on, all these layers back on. But that is going to wrap up Lulu. Let's go ahead and finish off the time lapse. We got like a couple more seconds on this. Oh, you can watch me paint pics. You can watch me paint pics. But uh, in the meantime, yeah, I just want to say thank you guys for joining me live on Twitch as usual. Um, oh, also another really cool thing is if you guys want to take a look at this PSD for yourself, hey, hey, I'm going to be uploading it onto a very special site. I think you know what it is. It is the Patreon, but where the heck is the Patreon? Where the heck is the Patreon? Oh, there we go. Alrighty, so yes, I will be uploading my PSD of Lulu to the Patreon. If you'd like to support the show, you can go ahead and check it out at patreon.knkl or patreon slash knkl. I'll go ahead and post that link in the chat for you guys. It will be uploaded shortly after this goes onto YouTube. Um, but that link is in the chat for you guys. People on YouTube, you can just click that handy little link down there in the bottom right. You can go ahead and pledge and get all kinds of cool rewards, support the show, and most importantly, get this good old thing. Get this good old, uh, get this PSD. 
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. So with all that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and call today good. Yes, we are done. People on thumbs up. People on YouTube, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. I will see you guys on Thursday. We'll have a really good Thoughtful Thursday planned. Until then, you guys take care. See ya.